Hey, I'm Jordan, your friend in tech. I'm a software engineer and content creator. So this is kind of a mixed use space where I take my meetings, I code, and I also create content here. In today's video, I wanna walk you through my entire setup, how I designed it, and what items I actually use in my day-to-day -day life as both a coder and content creator. I'll be sure to leave timestamps and links to all the stuff I talk about in the description below. So if you wanna jump around, feel free to do that. And as a quick disclaimer, this video is sponsored and I have received a lot of stuff for free that I still use in my desk setup. But as always, I'll be sharing my honest thoughts and experiences and the fact that I still use these items in my day-to-day -day, kind of like speaks for itself. One of the bigger changes I've made to my desk setup is that I finally put up these IKEA peg ports that I've been under my desk for the last couple months, like literally months. And I'm so happy with how they turned out. I ended up using three different peg boards. So you can see this one is the largest one, smaller and then medium. And that way I was able to take advantage of all the wall space that I have above my desk. It's filled up with things that kind of represent me and my interests. Very quickly, I'll just walk you through what I have up on the wall. So I have two my notebooks. I have a book, Keep Going by Austin Kleon. Really good book. I also like how it serves as a reminder for myself to keep going. I have a clacker. This is really just aesthetics. I never use it in my videos, uh, but maybe I should. I also have a few USB cables that I need semi-frequently. So it's nice that they're still within reach and easy to access. I have my patent award, a little Android. This is a cleaner for my camera. It's like a little squeezing thing. This is kind of just, I just thought they looked nice, but just wrappers for some camera accessories that I bought. But yeah, I feel like the red looks really nice up here. This is my Insta360 camera. I have a little Lego figurine. This is a caricature of me and my girlfriend. I have a mechanical keyboard up here. This is my second favorite mechanical keyboard. My work hat, I have a little notebook in here, and that's pretty much it. I'm really happy with how it turned out. I think it's a nice mix of added functionality, added organization, as well as just contributing to the aesthetic of my desk setup. It adds a lot of color that is much needed because my desk setup itself is very much white, black, and gray. And speaking of desk setups, this new setup would not have been possible without the help from today's sponsor, FlexiSpot. They sent over this desk, this filing cabinet, and a bunch of other accessories, one of which I'm gonna need your help with. Starting with the desk, this is the FlexiSpot E8 Pro. I ended up choosing the white desktop and the white legs just because I like a light and bright setup. With this control panel right here, you can store up to four different desk heights. I use one for sitting, two for standing, three for walking, and four to fit my chair under my desk because I do use this space for other stuff like working out. And under the desk is the FlexiSpot cable management tray and it makes organizing your cables super easy. I think cable management is one of those things that's a low priority for most people because it just seems like a lot of tedious work, but it really just takes maybe like 30 minutes to make sure all your cables are nice and tidy. And for the most part, unless you're like moving things on your desk and switching things out, you don't ever really have to touch your cables ever again after just setting it up one time. To the right side of my desk is this filing cabinet. From the top drawer, I have cables and stationery. The second drawer, I have my hard drives. And then the bottom drawer is like this really large drawer. I keep my camera gear and other electronics. So it's really nice that this filing cabinet also has a lock because I'm able to lock all three drawers and make sure everything is nice and safe in there. And finally, the last thing that FlexiSpot sent me is this. It's one of those light strips that you can bend into any shape and make any color. And so I need your help choosing what to do with it. Option one is putting the lights above my pegboard. Option two is putting the lights behind my monitor. And option three is putting the lights underneath my desk. Let me know in the comments which option you like best. And thank you again to FlexiSpot for sponsoring today's video. First thing I wanna call out is my monitor because I made a big deal about unboxing a new monitor in one of my previous videos, but I ended up returning the Samsung monitor because I realized I just wanted a new monitor. I didn't really need one. And to give more context, my company has been doing layoffs for the last few weeks and it really made me reconsider my recent purchases. And ultimately I couldn't justify purchasing a new monitor when I still had one that works really well for my use case. And this is just a good reminder that if you see anything you like in this video, really think about whether you actually need it and it'll add value to your desk setup or is it just something that you want. The key keyboard I'm using right now is the Knock Free Light. It's a split mechanical keyboard, 60% wireless, which is great. It's probably my favorite keyboard that I've ever used. So with a normal keyboard, your arms are kind of pointed in a V shape like this. But with this split mechanical keyboard, you can just be where your arms lay down naturally. And so it's very ergonomic, very comfortable. So yeah, I highly recommend it if you're in the market for a new keyboard. This is the mouse that I've been using. It's the Logitech MX Master 3S and the S stands for silent. I really love this mouse, super ergonomic, feels really nice to the touch. The only thing with this light model is that it does get kind of dirty, but I keep my hands pretty clean when I'm at my desk anyways. Get like a damp paper towel and it comes right off usually. Next thing I want to talk about is this desk shelf from Grove Made. 
A lot of influencers have this, but I paid with this my own money. It's so expensive, but I think if you can easily afford it, it's worth it just because it adds a lot of functionality to your desk setup because when I actually am working and I have a bunch of stuff sprawled across my desk, I end up using it a lot to store different things like camera gear, I put things in here just to make my workspace a little bit more efficient. Originally, I bought this desk shelf just because I had a lot smaller workspace and I didn't have that many places to put things. But even now that I have like this pegboard and the filing cabinet, I'm still glad that I have this this desk shelf on my desk because it does provide a lot more functionality and organization when I'm actually using my desk to get work done. My secret for keeping a neat and tidy desk is actually my desk mat. This is from OrbitKey. It's their slim version. It's really neat because you can actually store documents or whatever you want in this hidden layer. I'm not really sure if it's hidden but you know like some people will put stuff underneath their mat completely but this takes it up to another level where you can still move your desk mat around um, and then you can also store documents and things that you don't want visible. This is really useful for me because I use post-it notes a lot and so they're usually scattered all around my desk but when I need to film something I can just like quickly hide it under here and keep it out of frame. One of the things that I used to be able to do with this desk setup is that I could like shove this whole desk mat underneath this desk shelf and like have this whole table cleared out but because I have my monitor back on its regular stand, it's kind of like blocking it. So I think one of the things I'm going to be changing up soon is getting a new monitor stand so that all the space under my desk shelf will be free and then I can just quickly move things out of the way. So I currently have three different lights to set up my workspace and you can see that they're all on right now. And just to show you what it looks like without them, let me just turn them all off really quickly. So you can see that it's a lot more darker in here. But yeah, if you ever worked in a dark space, then you kind of know like how bad it is. But the nice thing about good lighting is that it reduces eye strain and it also just creates a better atmosphere for working. So when I have foggy or dark mornings, having this bright light just helps keep me awake and makes me feel more productive. And then at night, I actually use yellow light to help me kind of be more cozy and like let my body know to start like winding down. I turned off all the main lights to show you the power of the bench. Q screen bar halo basically it lights up my main workspace and it's nice because it doesn't cause any glare on the screen and also doesn't get any light directly in my eyes which is a problem that i've had with other screen bars in the present it also comes with this wireless controller so turn it on and off you can also change the brightness change the color temperature like i was talking about the screen bar has a lot of smart features and different modes and settings but the one that i like has light coming out from both the front as well as this backlight because you can never have too much ambient lighting in my opinion. The BenQ light bar is connected to the BenQ docking station, which is what I'm gonna be talking about next. This is the DP1310, which is a kind of funny name, but it's basically BenQ's docking station. So basically with this, I connect all of my accessories and USB cables to this dock, and then I only need to plug in one cable from the dock to my laptop to have everything set up. And that makes it really easy to get work started because all I have to do is plug in one cable and I'm good to go. One of the cool features about this dock is that you can actually have two input sources and you can switch between them by pressing this big green button on the front. So you can imagine plugging in something like your laptop and a gaming system, maybe a switch or something. And let's say at the end of the workday, you wanna play your games on your monitor. All you'd have to do is press this button to quickly switch between the two. For me, I don't really play games that much anymore. So I have both my work laptop and my personal laptop connected to the stock. And all I gotta do is press this button to quickly switch between the two. One thing that's important to note though is that the USB ports only plug into the primary input source. So this is a good thing and a bad thing depending on your use case. So a good thing would be like when I have my personal backup drive connected to the dock. If I were to switch to my work computer, I wouldn't want that connection to go through. And then the bad thing, which is more of an annoying thing, is that it takes a few more steps to set up my keyboard and mouse with my work computer. But because I don't really switch between the two that often, maybe like once or twice a day, not that big of an issue, but something to keep in mind. <laughs> kind of look like my screensaver right now. But basically I want to talk about this dock. It's a dual laptop stand. Pretty much just got it from like one of those no name brands on Amazon. But I really like this one because you could customize how wide it is so that you get like a really good fit for your devices and also this specific one doesn't have any labeling on it, which I really like. I do all of my content creation work on my MacBook Pro. I bought this in 2020. It's the M1 MacBook Pro, 13 inch, 16 gigabyte of memory. I bought this when I first started my content creation journey. I was like editing 1080p video and this was a beast for that. But now that I'm working with 4K 10 bit footage, I am noticing that my computer is not handling it very well, at least not my larger project files. So I am tempted to upgrade to the M3 MacBooks, but not sure if I really need 
need it or if I just want it. It's a little bit different than the monitor situation because theoretically, if I have a faster machine and I'm able to edit more videos, then I'm able to make more videos and therefore make more money. But at the pace that I make videos, maybe it won't make that much of a difference in my day-to-day -day life. But I think I'm gonna wait for the M3 MacBooks to hit the refurbished store on Apple. Then I'll do a more fair cost-benefit analysis on whether it makes sense for me to upgrade. But yeah, definitely tempted to upgrade to the new MacBooks just because I've seen like a ton of reviews. But again, probably just getting influenced online. And then this section right here is a hodgepodge of a bunch of different accessories. Um, so the base is an Elgato master mount. And then on top is my webcam. I also put my headphones here just for easy access when I need to use it. And then this right here is for my development devices. So whenever I'm coding and stuff, I could like put the phone here. So I know that it'll be at an ergonomic height and I don't have to be like looking down straining my neck. So I really like this setup, but I do think it looks kind of ugly and it does feel a little bit cluttered next to the lamp. So I might try it and move it to the other side of the desk, but let me know what you think. I would say my walking pad is definitely my favorite desk accessory just because it has so many benefits. One of the main benefits of a walking pad is being able to walk throughout my workday. So I easily walk 10,000 steps a day. And in fact, I did walk 10,000 steps every single day of 2023. And I wouldn't have been able to do it without this walking pad just because it makes it so convenient to walk while you work. This one is the walking pad C2 and I've been using it for over a year now and it's still going strong. It's pretty low maintenance too. All I have to do is oil it once a month and wipe it down every now and then because I store it underneath my couch. It does get a little bit dusty, but other than that, it's like super easy to use. The second benefit is that it actually helps me stay focused throughout my workday just because I can't really think about too many other things while I'm walking and working. Second to my MacBook, my chair is the most expensive purchase I made for my desk setup and honestly, it's money well spent. I did a ton of research on chairs, spent so much time watching YouTube videos, and I ended up choosing the steel case gesture because of these rotating arms. It's like super customizable. It goes down, it goes up, it goes rotates, ex extends, de-extends, whatever the opposite word for extends is. But this is the reason why I bought this chair because it made my workspace so much more ergonomical. <laughs> Feels like I'm making up words now, but it made my workspace much more ergonomic. I've had this chair for two years. I've had no complaints. I have no back problems. Honestly, just a really great high quality chair. I actually had an issue with the first one that they sent me. It had like a crack in the back and they immediately sent me a brand new chair. So I'm really happy that they stand by their warranty and they have great customer service, which is really important when you're gonna be spending so much money on an ergonomic chair. And then really quickly, just going over the last few bits of my desk setup. I have this Ember mug charger, which is basically my smart mug that keeps my coffee warm for like one and a half hours, but sometimes it takes me longer to finish my coffee. So I just put the charging base on here so that my coffee stays warm until I'm finished drinking with it. I also have this coaster for for whenever I'm drinking something else that's not in that mug. And it's nicely tucked away underneath my desk shelf. Another thing is this kitchen timer that I got off of Amazon. I use it as a Pomodoro timer. So anywhere from 25 to 45 minutes, I'll focus on one single task and that's all I do. And this really helps keep me focused and motivated to get things done. And then when the timer ends, I take a break and then I start the timer again to work on either the same task or a brand new task. So if you're someone like me and you get distracted easily, I highly recommend trying out this second Technique. You could start off with using your phone, but I found that when I finished the timer on my phone, I would just like automatically scroll through social media. And so I bought a whole separate different timer just for this purpose of like tracking my time. I also love using post-it notes on my desk. I use a bunch of different sizes to represent different things, but I mostly use them to take quick notes and also to keep track of my daily to-do list because I just love the physical aspect of checking things off. By the way, did you realize that my screensaver is actually me? I built it using generative AI and I show you how I did it in my next video right here.